Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mountain May Creations. I'm Jill, and I am so excited to be here with you again today during the middle of the day, which I don't normally do, but I'm on vacation for my full-time job this week, so I'm able to jump on here with you guys yesterday and today. So today, um, well, let me just say welcome to all the new members. If you're new here, welcome. If you're catching this on YouTube, I would love it if you'd give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, it helps me grow. And if you're watching this on Facebook, comment, let me know where you're watching from, what you're doing today. And if you're catching this on a replay, please, comment anything. It bumps the video up and lets more people see it. So with all that said, today I'm going to show you the earrings that we made yesterday, the resin earrings. Then we're going to finish up a wooden door hanger that I've been working on. And yes, I'm wearing Christmas because Christmas is only 60 days away. You guys, that is amazing. I am, uh, uh, good morning, Grace. How are you doing? I am so, um, shocked that it's only 60 days away. <laughs> Where did the time go? It's crazy. All right, so I'm just going to jump right in and show you the earrings that we did yesterday. Now, we made some in the molds yesterday, and I also, once I got off the live, I went ahead and resined some of the wood um, earrings that I decorated, and I'll show you those as well. But I just wanted to show you these. I have not popped them out yet. I don't know if they're terrible. <laughs> We're going to find that out together. And, um, y'all ever had those days where you just drop everything? Like, I've been dropping everything. I spilled a half a bottle of water on the floor. I'm just, like, dropping everything today. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> so, here's some that I finished up. Some of them I put napkins on, and some of them I did alcohol ink, and some of them I did wood burn. So, I'm going to show you those also. Thank you for sprinkling, Grace. I love it, love it, love it. Yes, definitely sprinkle if you are watching this. That helps me grow as well also. Um, I learn so much from other crafters on Facebook and on YouTube. And if I can just be helped to one person, it just uh, makes my day. And I'll tell you what, last weekend when I did the craft event, I'm telling you what, it's not about the money. I met a follower, one of my subscribers on YouTube, came to that event, and she said that I inspired her, and she had the cutest earrings on, and she made those um, from watching one of my videos, and that just right there made my entire day, week, month, year, everything. That meant a whole lot to me that somebody actually, um, I could help somebody make some cute earrings or just you know, meeting her was the highlight for sure of that craft event. It was so awesome to actually meet somebody because, you know, you don't really meet a lot of people online face to face, but yeah, that was, that was amazing. So that really, that made my day. Okay, let's get to it. So first I'm going to pop these out and this is the best part of making these earrings is popping them out. Um, also, I don't know if I told y'all yesterday, but these molds have like a little, um, thing sticking up. And that creates the hole in your earring. So here is the first one. Let's see. That um, mica powder looks so, the white looks so cool in that. I'm loving that. I don't really see a whole lot of bubbles, but maybe just because I don't have my overhead light on, but it looks pretty good, y'all. So all the little techniques that I tried does help. <laughs> Believe me. And here's the other one. So yeah, these these turned out really good. Well, there's, see, I told y'all, I was dropping everything today. It's crazy. All right, so here they are. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna drop them again. What is going on? All right, so all I have to do now is put the hooks in there and these will be so cute. Oh my goodness, y'all. I love how these turned out. I wish I would've made more now. All right, so let's do the red and white. That just reminds me of a candy cane. So I'm gonna pop these out. That looks pretty cool. The way that mica powder looks, it almost looks like powder. I don't know how well y'all can see that, but it looks really, really cute. So that's the top part. And these just pop right out. They're easy to get out. And this is the bottom. Oh my gosh, y'all. I am loving this. Oh my goodness. So this is, I probably am not going to be able to hold on to it to show you, but I'm going to try. So it's going to be, I'm going to have a jump ring 
from here to this one, and then the hook will be in the top of that one. I'm assuming there's a hole in the bottom. No, I'm sorry. It goes like this. Now, I can either do it like this, or I can just do this on a hook, which I may do. I'm not sure if I'm crazy about, about this part. I might do that as like a stud or something. So that's what these two look like. So far, so good, you guys. And then we have the other one, and these just pop right out. And they're not always gonna be exactly like each other because I think that's almost impossible, but it's pretty close. So I love how these turned out. The, I'm telling you, the mica powders, um, I haven't used those in a, in a pretty good while, so I'm excited how these turned out. Um, I really, really, really miss working with those mica powders. So here's the other little piece. And this could be like a little stud but it has the hole. Good morning from New Jersey. Whoa, glad to have you. Is it cold up there in New Jersey? It's been pretty mild here. I think it's supposed to start getting cooler um, towards the weekend, but it's pretty mild right now. I'm actually wearing shorts, so. And here are the little leaves. And I... I'm sure that there's going to be bubbles, but I'm not seeing them. I can't imagine I would, now there's a, oh, that came right off. So here's what this looks like, you guys. I need to look at it in better light because I'm not seeing any bubbles. And not to have any bubbles would be crazy good, but I don't see any. So that's awesome. So there's this one. And then here is the other one. Now I've got some flashing on the side and it's just where the resin ran over a little bit on the sides, but we can take those right off, file them off or, you know, just pull them right off. So here's the other one. These turned out pretty cute. Oh, I do see some bubbles. And these are a little bit bendy still. The other ones are not. So these may not have cured all the way. So let's see how they bend. So these might need to cure some more. And I do see, it looks like a, oh, that must be where that little sprinkle is. If you can see, it looks like a little hole in there. So these didn't turn out perfectly, but they're okay. And these are the little um, tops of the earring. So these actually, with the bubbles, they did pretty good. When you're doing clear, that's when they really show up. So these turn out pretty good. I'm, I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how these turned out. So that's the um, earrings. Now these, I'm gonna leave these out to cure a little bit more because they're still a little bit bendy. And it, I think it has just now been um, 24 hours. So they probably still need to cure a little bit. And, um, but I'm really, I'm happy with these, how these turned out. I love the blue. So let me know what y'all think about those. All right, so now let me show you some of the ones that I had already decorated and I just needed to resin. These, I'd have to do the back still, but this is what, I used a um, flag napkin. So this is the back without the resin and this is with the resin. <laughs> and I mean, doesn't that make a big difference in the two? How crazy good is that? So I'm loving how these turned out. I don't really see any bubbles in these right off. So that's a good thing. So there's the star. And then um, here is the, we did alcohol inks. These are not resined on this side. And then we did alcohol inks on this side. Look at that, you guys. So look at the difference. So I did two different designs on each side. How pretty is that? I love how the resin makes the um, alcohol ink pop. It is so pretty. And then the, we did this side, no resin, this side resin. How it's just a world of difference. So we have these. I can't wait to get some hooks in these. And so I need to finish the backs, but I'll do that today probably. But there's the front of those. And then we have, this is the back. 
And this is the um, resin side. So look at that. How crazy is that? I love seeing them side by side, but how pretty are these, you guys? I love, 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 love these earrings. And then we have another alcohol ink. This is the side that's not, um, does not have alcohol ink, and this side does. These turned out so good. So, yeah, very, very pretty. I love, love, love the resin. And then we have the, I did torch paste and um, kind of wood burned the, pattern into these earrings. So this is the back. It's unfinished. I will, um, I think the back has stain on it because this side has stain, wood stain. So this side I'm just going to resin, but there is, these are so, so pretty. Love, love, love. And then we have another napkin pair that I got from, these were the same napkin as the stars, but these are the stripes. So this is without resin and this is with resin. See how it makes the colors pop? Love it. So these are super cute. So I'll need to resin the back and then these will be finished to put hooks in. So that's what we did. Now let's get on to the wood round. My favorite, favorite, favorite. Okay, so I've been working on this wood round. I painted it a couple weeks ago. And um, yesterday I used a Magnolia Design stencil on the bottom. So here's what we have so far. So you see the stenciling on the bottom? How pretty is that? You guys, that is so, so pretty. So, so, so pretty. So now on this part, I'm going to do Merry Christmas, and then we're going to put a bow. And before I put the bow on it, I will spray lacquer on it. Um, I don't want to use, I use the polyacrylic paint-on sealer, but with the chalk paste, I found that sometimes it can smear it, so I don't use that on any chalk paste. So I'm just gonna spray lacquer over it, and the lacquer makes it really, really pretty. Um, this is the stencil I used, and it's from Magnolia, and I will um, post the link to the Magnolia items below, but this is a huge stencil, but you can use it on anything. You don't have to use like the whole stencil. So what I'm planning on doing is wood burning some of the ornaments and maybe um, some of the snowflakes onto some earrings and doing a wood burn and then watercolor. That's what my next project is gonna be. I may do that on a lot with you guys. But this is called the Christmas pattern is the name of this one. So this is a really, really cool pattern. And so earlier this morning, I made the Merry Christmas stencil. Now this is made with my Icon Art system. So um, I just went into Cricut Design Space, found a font that I liked, put in Merry Christmas. Then I went over to Silhouette Studio because with Cricut Design Space, you can't print from there. Um, you can print only a certain size, which is only like 6.75 by 9.25, which is not big enough. So I take the um, designs or words or whatever, and I create in uh, Cricut Design Space. I make the round. I get everything situated on the design space, and then I save it. And then I go to Silhouette Studio and get the design, and then I resize it to what size I need it to be, and then I can print. Now, the stencils that I have are 10 by 12. So I can only make a stencil 12 inches wide unless I do two together or I cut part of the, or ungroup part of the image and do two stencils with one image. And I have done that before. But what I did on this one, because my printer will only print up to eight and a half by 14. So this was 11 by nine inches wide. And so you can see I used all the stencils. So what I did was I taped two of the films together. I don't have them with me, but you print on this um, film and then you put this, put that with this and put it under the light and that's how it makes the stencil. I know it's crazy sounding, but um, I taped two of those sheets together and told the printer I needed to print eight and a half by 14. That way I could get it all the way to exactly 12 inches wide, which is what I needed. I could have went bigger, but I, just decided to go with this one. So with the Icon Art System, you can pretty much um, uh, make your own stencils of your own design if you can create your own design or um, 
anything you want to do. It's like the possibilities are endless with that. And that's what I really love about um, the icon art because you're not limited on what you can do. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I am going to, and I will also put the link to the icon art system if you're interested in looking at it. It's, it's amazing, and it has helped me tremendously. So, I mean, I can make shirts that I know nobody else has because I designed them. So, just like my guinea girl shirt. <laughs> I'm obsessed with those birds, y'all. It's crazy. All right, so I'm going to tape off where I don't want, I don't want to get anything um, on that. Actually, I don't think I need to tape it because I'll know where I'm putting it. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and sand this a little bit to make it soft. And then I'm going to put some Magnolia Design Wax on there. That just keeps it from bleeding as much. So I'm just going to sand it just lightly just to get it soft. Or not soft, smooth. And then I'm going to put some of that wax on it. And that just makes this soft because if your wood is rough, um, it may not, it may... Um, bleed underneath your stencil and you really don't want that. Believe me, I've had that happen before. So, all right. So let's see. This wax right here is awesome. It doesn't have any odor or anything and it makes it, um, I had put wax on the bottom of that. You can see the difference where I didn't wax it and where I did. It's uh, pretty, pretty good stuff and you can use it right after it. Like I could spray um, some sealer on this, but I would have to wait for it to dry. With this, it's like you can stencil on it right afterwards. So I'm just going to put a little bit on here. Let me put the camera down so y'all can see what I'm doing. So I'm just putting a little bit of the wax on here, and it looks yellow on your towel, but it's really not. And all the stencils that I use, Magnolia stencils, um, Icon Art stencils, they're all reusable. They're adhesive and they're all, um, you can reuse them. I've never, I have not worn one out yet. And um, there's some that I've used a bunch. Now you can stretch them, um, stuff like that, but you just don't, you really don't wanna do that. So you just have to be careful and I have, a tub of water back here that I'm gonna put my stencil in as soon as we're done because you don't want the paint to dry in your stencil because that will um, mess your stencil up. Okay. Now I'm gonna be using Magnolia Design Chalk Paste in Brilliant White. This stuff is amazing. All right, so, and I'm also going to trim the end of this off because I don't really want the stencil, I don't want it sticking on this because I don't want it to pull that paint up. So I'm going to trim off some of the bottom. And I may lay my, I may lay something over that so it doesn't stick to it. Um, also, you need to write back on the back of your stencils so you put them on there the correct way once they're dry because if you don't, you can ruin your stencil that way. Now, with the Icon Art stencils, when you wash it out, you will, as soon as you finish washing it out, you'll put the backing on it and then hang it to dry. With the Magnolia stencils, you don't put the backing on it until it's completely dry. So... And I'm going to try to get this centered because I'm going to have a big bow up here. And we're going to do that bow next too. But I won't be able to attach the bow until after I seal this. Now I'm going to try to get the Merry Christmas part lined up with the... Let me grab my glasses. I'm trying to get it lined up with the bottom of the... Now, I've got to make sure I have this center correctly because I have issues with that. Um, so, I'm just going to measure. All right. I 
Wow, that looks. Now, let me check one more thing. I'm just making sure that it's the same all the way across, and this needs to come down just a tad. And because it's um, adhesive, you can move it around without having any issues. This is the hardest part for me is getting it um, even. I think that that's about right. Sorry, I know this is time consuming, but I just want to make sure that I have this exactly right. <laughs> oh, it'll drive me crazy if I don't get it centered correctly. And it's kind of hard because they're not all the same. The letters are not all the same across. I think that's about right. All right, now let's make sure we're good this way. Oh, we need to go over this way some. So yeah, like I said, this is the hardest part, but at least the stencils, you can, you can reposition them because um, they're adhesive, which is, makes it really good. Like I said, this is the hardest part. And I have this struggle with t-shirts when I'm trying to center those. I just, they, they just have to be perfect. <laughs> I can't stand it if it's not right. It makes me crazy. All right. Now I've got dust on it. Okay, I think we're good. I'm not going to push it all the way down until I have it just right. Sorry, guys. I know this takes forever. This part does, but it just has to be right. <laughs> yeah, this is... And I think Yes, okay. Whoops. I hope that doesn't 
I'm gonna stick this down here because I don't want it peeling up any of my paint that I've already done. And I hope that that doesn't cause it. Oh, I just moved it. All right, we're gonna go with it this time, hopefully. I think that this looks okay now. Sorry guys, I know that that's frustrating to sit there and watch me measure, but it's gotta be right or I'm gonna go crazy. All right, I'm just not gonna push it down on that where I've stenciled and hopefully it won't pull anything up. So I'm just gonna brandish it down really good. And I'm also gonna put a piece of tape on the ends where I got the stencil pretty close to the end just so I don't get anything on the uh, red part. I mean, you can pretty much control where you are when you're using um, the squeegees, but I just want to be sure. You never know. All right, so now we can put the paint on. And this is so easy. And the good thing is this is chalk paste and it's not permanent until you seal it. So if something's not right, you can wash it off and resand it. I've done that many times. So I'm just gonna put some white on here and we're gonna start stenciling. And I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just going over um, with no pressure because if you use a lot of pressure, you can cause bleeds. And those are not our friends. This is, this makes crafting so easy with these stencils and the chalk paste. It's quite amazing how far crafting has come. And I don't know if you guys were, any of you were on yesterday. My niece was sick and she has the flu. So hopefully my mama doesn't get it. My brother has it, which is her dad. And that's probably where she got it from. Okay, so let me, I'm gonna slowly lift this and see if I need to go over anything else. So far, so good. Let me take this off. And then the best part is lifting up the stencil. Well, I could have got some more on that C, but that's okay. It'll be fine. That is so cute. And then I, I have fingerprints on there, but I can those will be gone once I stain it. How pretty is that, you guys? Look at that. Now, the C, I can go back and fix that, touch it up a little bit. But look how crisp that is. I mean, that is so cute, you guys. So, I'm going to sit this over here to dry. And um, if you have any of this chalk paste, from Magnolia, you, you want to keep um, water, distilled water in it every so often just to keep it from drying out. Believe me, I learned the hard way with that. I wasted a lot of chalk paste by not doing that. So I just spritzed a couple times in there and we're going to close it back up and it'll be good to go. And I mean, like I said, you don't need to use hardly any chalk paste. So one of these containers will last a long time. So let me move this out of the way and then we will get started on the bow, the best part. So actually I'm gonna sit this back here because I'm gonna need to look at the size. 
So I'm just going to sit it behind me. And I picked out some ribbons and I have some greenery. So um, Wayne made me this awesome bow maker that I talk about all the time. All it is is a bow dabra and he screwed it down on this big piece of wood. And then I have like a tape measure that's stuck on here so I can measure my ribbon. It makes making bows so much easier. But the kind of bow I'm gonna do today is like a messy bow. Um, I don't really know what the name of it would be, but it's not gonna be loops, it's just gonna be strands. So these are some of the ribbons that I'm gonna use. This has some green in it, and then this has green and white and red. So um, all of these ribbons, believe it or not, came from Sam's Club. They have their Christmas ribbon out right now. If you if you do crafting and you need some ribbon, run to your Sam store because these don't last long. They're $7, seven, seven something for a roll, which is completely crazy. You get 20, no, 50 yards of ribbon and it's good ribbon. So if you need ribbon, that's where you should go. I mean, it's amazing. All right, so I'm gonna start with this one and I'm gonna see what size I need. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this, this size. So I will measure it here in just a second. All right, so this is 12, a little more than 12 inches strip and that's what I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna dovetail them as I go. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut like three, three strips of each color. Or maybe I should do four, let's do four. Cause I want the bow to be pretty big and or pretty full, full not really big. And then um, we'll add some greenery. Now last year at Michael's they had, they didn't receive a lot of their Christmas decorations until after Christmas. And they had their stuff in there, like 75% off, and it was pretty amazing. So that, I picked up some garland that I use for wood rounds, the green part, so I stocked up on that. This ribbon is so cute. I've got a lot of ribbon. How do y'all, like if you're a crafter, how do you store your ribbon? So I bought, a shoe rack and that worked really good until the shoe rack fell over <clears throat> and then I hot glued the rods in there and the rods kept coming out and then all the ribbon would fall out and the holder would fall over so I'm looking for another way to store my ribbon if anybody has any great tips on that that would be lovely and so um thanks grace yeah, I am super excited for this wreath because I was not sure. I painted it red, but then I wasn't sure what I was going to decorate on it. Um, I was like, now what am I going to put on there? And right now I have an 18 inch round that I stained with gray and I'm not sure what I'm going to do on that one either. I think I'm going to do like a winter scene on that one and just make it like a welcome or something and not like, not like where it would have to be just Christmas. You could put it up all winter. That's what I'm thinking on that one. But I haven't decided yet. And since that's an 18 inch, I'm limited with my stencils with Icon Art because my printer will only print so big. And they do sell bigger, um, bigger stencil films, but I can't, I mean, it wouldn't do me any good to get it because I can't um, print that big. So, I've got to figure something out. I may end up having to get another printer, even though I really don't want to, because I have a really good printer. But I'll have to come up with something. If the, if the image that I have can be ungrouped, then I can make two stencils, and that would work. But some of the images, like I found an image I wanted on Etsy, a file, but I couldn't ungroup it. And they said their file was only 15 inches. I'm not really sure about that, because I thought you could make any file, any size you wanted it. So I didn't buy it because I didn't think it would work out. 
and design bundles, I use a lot of their images. And the reason I use a lot of theirs, number one, they're really cute. Number two, they come with a commercial license so I can create these things and sell them. Some people on Etsy, you know, their stuff they don't want you selling. It's only for personal use. So you have to be careful when you're purchasing your files that they're not... Um, that they're not, you know, doesn't have the license with them. So I'm just gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna dovetail all of these and then I'm gonna just start putting them in the Rodabra to hold it. You don't really need a bow maker for this, but for me, it just helps hold it. And that's what I like about it, um, is it holds the ribbon because it kills my hands when I have to hold them real tight. And then when I tie it, it's not tight enough, and then the, the bow falls apart. So that's why I use this a lot. Because, you know, I struggle with bows. All right, so I have these little commando hooks, you know, underneath it that holds my little string here. That'll hold this down so it doesn't get in the way. Now I'm just going to start putting the ribbon in just like this and I'm going to do um, a different piece every time until we're finished. It's going to be super cute. And then I'll show you the greenery that I have that, um, that I got at Michael's. I need to cut that one a little bit shorter. So, what is everybody up to today? I know I told y'all I was on vacation. So, after I get done here, I'm going to go hang out with my birds, my guineas. Those are the most, those birds are just a lot of fun. I know that sounds crazy, but we had um, yesterday, a lady came up here, and we live in the country. So, we live off the road. We don't really have close neighbors. So, when someone comes up here and knocks on the door, it's like, yikes, who is that? So it was a lady from Chantel and they were in, they were, they're going to run, um, fiber for high speed internet. We already have really good internet from a local guy that I'm not planning on changing, but I think it's good for the people that live below us as they have Verizon. Anyway, the lady came up here and told me she was going to be walking around, which is fine. And, um, so I went out to wash the car because it's beautiful outside yesterday and I let the birds out because I was out there with them. And I'm gonna tell you what, those birds were raising cane because those people were up here. So they are good. Um, people say they have, they're good like watchdogs. They really are. I mean, they were so, they were more vocal yesterday than I've ever heard them. It was really cute. They were protecting their mama. <laughs> oh. So all I'm doing is I'm dovetailing each set, each strip, each strip and then I'm just putting it in, in the bowdabber to hold it, basically. Um, I'm not using any um, loops in this bow. This is just like a messy bow, I guess you could call it. I love these kind of bows. I think they look really good on the wood rounds. So that's what we're doing. And I'm just, I'm, use, I'm doing one piece of each design as I go. So they're all mixed up. And then we'll end with the solid red and white. So I hope that you guys are having a good week. We have um, our church has trunk or treat this coming weekend. My niece is excited about that. I'm hoping that she'll be okay by then since she has the flu. But I'm sure she got it from my brother because he's been sick. They just pass it all around. And when, you're, when your little ones are in school, it's like a germ factory. It's kind of hard not to catch stuff. All right. This is going to be so cute, you guys. And um, once that wood round dries, I will spray it with the lacquer. And then I'll put the hooks on the back to hang it with. 
and then I will put the, the ribbon on the bow on and I staple the bow and the greenery to the back of those rounds because I have found that if you use hot glue and someone hangs their wreath in the heat or in the sun, it will cause that hot glue to melt and it will, the bow will fall off. So I've started stapling them, the, the bow and the greenery, and then you don't ever have to worry about it coming off. And that works really good. And I use the D hooks to, um, on the back of it for, and I use ribbon just to hang it with, but I screw the D hooks to the back. Um, so they're not, they're not going to fall off. So that's what I'm doing here is just cutting the ribbon, dovetailing the ends, just putting it in the bow dabber just so it will hold it down. And then I will lift it out, tie it up, and then we'll be done with the, with the bow. And then I'll probably use a piece of this red ribbon to go in the center. These are actually my favorite type of bows to make. I think they look really good on the wood rounds. This thing right here goes down in here and it just like pushes everything down. And so now I'm gonna bring the ribbon up or the little string up and I'm gonna take that through the loop and tie it tight. And if I need to make any of the ribbons shorter, I can cut them. I would definitely rather have them uh, too long than too short because you can't put them back. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to go and tie this around the back. Make sure it's all good and tight. And this is just the Bodabra. It comes with the Bodabra. So. Okay. Now, I did not turn my glue gun on, so let me grab that and turn that on. Let that be heating up while we fluff the bow. So this is what we have right now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and just fluff it up. And I tried to move the pieces around as I was putting them in the Bodabra, but I like to just give them a little bit of a curl as I go through. See like that? So I just take it and I just kind of go like this to give a little bit of curl. And then I move them around where it needs to be moved. I think there is a name for this type of bow, but I don't know what it is called. I just call it a messy bow. Okay, so now we have our bow made. How cute is that, y'all? And now I'm gonna tie a piece of the red right around the center to hide the little string. So I just cut a little piece of the ribbon and I'm gonna, as soon as my heat gun heats up, I'm just gonna take it and go right around the center like that. And then I'm gonna glue it back here. And I've cut too much, which is okay. I always do that. So I'm just gonna trim that. And then I'm gonna bring this one around as tight as I can. And I shouldn't have even fluffed the bow because now I've messed the bow. <laughs> and as soon as that heats up, we will glue that down. I think this is going to look really, really cute. Yeah. 
And with the pops of green in here, it, it adds a little bit more color. Plus we're gonna have the um, greenery, the garland. Just wanna cut this a little bit. This one looks a little bit shorter. And I'm gonna tell you, I don't know if, if it's just me or or what, but I have the hard the hardest time finding good scissors. These scissors came from Magnolia, and these are the best scissors I have ever had. I love them. They are so amazing. I don't know why I have such a hard time finding good scissors. But yeah, this is going to be really cute. So... Try to hold it up so y'all can see it before while we're waiting on that. And I may have to trim it some more, but I think it's gonna be really cute. That's gonna be cute. And now I have some garland down here that I was gonna cut like parts of it off. Like this part I think would be really cute if I can get it cut apart without I don't know how I'm going to get that off from the bottom. I may have to get my big, these big things. See if I can cut that. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> Let's try these. Maybe. My goodness. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get to cut that or not. I'll have to mess with that. All right, let's see if this bow finished. All right. Now, I'm just going to bring this little piece back here and put some glue on it. And I always wear these finger protectors because this glue is super hot. And don't forget about the um, the give back gift for October. This is coming up on the last few days of October to get in on that. Check out the, um, thank you, Grace. Check out the post that is pinned to the top and it tells you all the ways to get a, an entry. And I have a box full of goodies that somebody's gonna get. It's just my way of giving back to you guys for supporting my little crafting page. All right, you guys, so it looks like we've got the bow. Just gonna fluff it back up where I unfluffed it. <laughs> Try to get this situated. And if you guys are making a craft or something, post it, post it, let me see it. Post it over on Jill's Creative Side. That's my private Facebook group, but you're welcome to join that group. Um, I do all the lives in this group, but I do share them in that group so everybody can see what we're working on. So here's the bow. All finished. It'll look much better on the actual um, wreath door hanger. This looks a little funny. So that's it, y'all. Um, I'm going to work on cutting that... Um, garland apart because that's going to be a little tougher than I thought. I may have to get Wayne to cut it for me. So that is it, you guys. Um, there is fingerprints on here from where I put the wax on it, but those I'm going to wipe all that off once everything is dry. I'm going to spray it with lacquer. Then we're going to put the bow on here and then the greenery. But y'all, how 
cute is this going to be once we get this, if I can get it situated. That is going to be super cute. It looks weird right now. But once I get this attached and put the greenery with it, it is going to be so pretty. Um, let me know what you think about it. And I hope that you guys like this video. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel if you're watching on Facebook. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here. And um, comment, let me know what you think. So you guys have a great rest of your Tuesday. Have a great rest of your week. It's going to be, I think the weather is still going to be pretty nice. And also, let me just tell you, um, I don't know if any of you know what 31 Gifts is, but I'm a consultant for 31. I have a page called um, Bags and More with Jill. I'm having a sale on my on-hand inventory right now. Go check that out. It's amazing prices on that stuff. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. Since Christmas is only 60 days away, um, there's some good deals over there. It would make great Christmas gifts. There's a blanket. Oh, my gosh, y'all, that blanket is so soft. Anyway, I'm not going to go on with that, but just go check that out if you'd like. So anyway, thanks guys for being here. Thanks for watching with me. Hope y'all have a great day and I will see y'all soon. Y'all take care.